All right, today we're looking at setting the mechanical limits on old and new steel line garage door openers. They both use the same motor head. And this also works on old and new Glidomatic roll door openers, such as this one right here. Usually you'll have a red manual release lever. The limits are on the top section behind this cover on your motor on your glider rolls. And they are on the bottom half of your motor on the steel line units. Um, also renamed Boss garage door openers. They used to be steel line and they um, had some made in the Boss brand. All right, let's get into it. First, let's see how the limits operate. So we'll start with the steel line Boss unit. This will most likely be up on your roller garage door facing outwards in this direction or facing outwards in this direction so you can see these motor wires coming out to the box. It's a lot more difficult to get to the manual release on a left hand installation. On a right hand installation as you can see the manual release is right in front of you. The limits are about the same on both sides just depending on the amount of side room you have between the uh, cover and the wall. So on the lower half of the motor you have a cover which can be released via this little tab here and here. If we just pry the cover open by sticking a screwdriver or something similar into these little openings, the cover will come off very easily. On your Glidomatic units, you have the bottom section with the manual release and the top section has a very similar cover. This will have up to three screws. This one's got two screws and usually one or two is left out. Normally we just put this one back in, it's enough to hold the cover on. So you just undo one screw and the other screw. Now some of these newer models, they do just pop off the same. There's a little slot up here. So once you've got those screws off, the cover will just pry off. And as you can see, you've got the exact same ham and limit switch setup. Now these are the older models. These have a squarer edged ham, which don't quite roll over the limit switch as good. You might find they do foul up occasionally. Um, we do round those edges off to make it a bit more reliable. But this one hasn't moved in 30 years. This is a very old model, 1992. Has never been adjusted before, which is awesome. But these mechanical limits are super reliable. But yeah, that's the Glidomatic cam system, which is exactly the same as your steel line system, except the steel line one's down below. Now behind here, we have a set of cams. We have an open, cam and a close cam, which corresponds to the open switch and close switch, or vice versa if it's on the other side of the door. If we turn the motor over, you'll see this is the part that engages with the end of the roller door. This is the little fork here that attaches, and as this spins around, there's a mechanical gear inside the electric motor and that spins a gear in there, that red gear, and that spins around. So when we engage the motor, that gear moves in an upwards direction, engaging with that ring gear around the outside. There's some teeth around there. You can almost see the lines there. There's another row of teeth like these red ones along here and that's what drives this ring around. This is called the ring gear and these are the forks that are attached to your door. So let's disengage the motor. So as this ring gear moves around by the motor in here, there's a small set of teeth attached to the inside of the ring gear. As I'm spinning the ring gear around, those small teeth move as well. Very fine amount of movement. Now these turn another set of gears. So there's a large outside gear which turns these set of gears here in a reduction. And then it turns this set of cams quite slowly. You can go about three revolutions in one whole door travel up to about a three meter roller door. So let's operate these and see how they work in conjunction with these two limit switches. Now if this motor is on the right hand side of your door and it's driving the door from this side here, as we turn the ring gear, you'll be able to see those cams spin around and that one hits the outside limit switch. And that tells the box to turn off the power to the motor. Now if we turn the ring gear back in the other direction, the other cam will spin all the way around and it will hit the bottom or lower limit switch. I'll give this an operate for you so you can see how they work. As you can see, the upper limit cam has come away from the open limit switch and we'll just reverse the direction and you'll be able to see the open cam hit the switch and stop the door. 
if we spin the ring gear towards us, that's raising the roller door, the roller's coming up. That would be this limit switch either here, or it could be the other limit switch. Because if we keep going around, that will eventually hit the lower limit switch as well. So the best way to work out which limit switch is for up and down, operate your roller door from about the halfway position. And when the cams start moving, just press one of these switches manually. And if the door stops, then that's the direction of travel that the limit switch will be stopping on. So if the door's closing and it stops by this switch here, that's your lower limit switch. If it doesn't stop, press the other limit switch and that's the correct limit switch for that direction of travel. So setting or fine tuning the limits is very easy. As the door travels around, all we need to do is loosen the three outside screws with a Phillips head screwdriver. This one is a little large. We're going to have to go to a pH one. This is a pH two, which is not fitting into the slot. So we'll try the pH one. Because at the moment, you can't move these cams at all. They're locked in place from friction. But if we simply loosen the three screws just a small amount, then you'll find that these cams now move by hand. If your door is not closing enough, then that means the cam will be hitting the switch too early. So you can physically move that cam backwards away from the limit switch so the door can travel further before it hits the switch. Now, if your door is hitting the ground and bouncing back up again, you wanna move that cam closer to the limit switch. The best thing to do is move the door down to the ground by hand and then push that limit switch until it clicks. So when that cam hits the limit switch and it clicks, go a little bit further and just tighten those screws or even just one screw just till the cams are firm and then operate your door. Open the door and then close the door again. And that should hit the switch and turn the door off before it hits the ground or as it hits the ground. And just move that back and forwards a little tiny bit to fine tune that limit. So very easy and then you do the same with the upper limit. So as the door opens, this other cam will come around and hit that limit switch. If your door's not going up high enough, just move that cam away from the limit switch and then the door will open a little bit more. As you can see, there's more travel. If the door's hitting the top stopper too hard, move that cam towards the limit switch and then next time you open your door, it will stop earlier. So you're just getting the timing adjusted between the switches and the cams. As these cams come around, you want them to hit the switches at about the same time as you want the door to stop, or just a fraction before, because there is a slight delay and a slight run on, on the motor. So that's how you set the mechanical limits in steel line, boss and glidomatic roller doors. And of course, when you're done, just pop that cover back on. There's a hole here with a spigot. Just pop that in the hole. And then just make sure this motor is uh, no good. That screw's come out. Uh, just make sure your wiring goes through that top section there. Push the cover on. Easy as that. I'm that roller door bloke. Thanks for watching.